Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. A few years ago, I came up with an algorithm that allows a robot to uh, figure out where it is in a room and what its heading is using only a microcontroller and a small bit of hardware that is relatively inexpensive. I'm going to show that algorithm here and uh, I in a future video will show how I implemented it in a slightly different way uh, using a different sensor. Uh, that one does not use a mic microcontroller but uh, the concept still holds. Uh, so let's take a look at the setup for this. So right here I have a, a columnating ring that basically it has a little slit going through it that allows light to pass through the slit and hit this sensor right here in the center. And the idea is that I could use a stepper motor or some other kind of motor to rotate this around. Uh, I don't have a top or bottom on it, but in practice it would have one. It would rotate this around and this will allow light to hit the sensor from a specific angle. And let's say that I had as my sensor a sharp IR uh, sensor, uh, modulated IR detector, then what I would be able to do is as that uh, columnator sweeps around, I would uh, start to see my signal from a beacon at one angle and then stop seeing it at another angle. And if I just take those two angles and find uh, the angle that's in the middle of it, that would probably give me good enough resolution to locate the robot um, and I will tell you how in a little bit but that that's the, the way that you would figure it out it wouldn't be that like just when you can see it that's your angle it'd be there's going to be some range where you are able to see the sensor uh, ideally you'd paint the inside of this ring with something like Vanna black or maybe just plain old black would be fine uh, you don't want reflections uh, coming in and, and uh, distorting where you're seeing the uh, beacon. And the idea would be that you need to have beacons or markers or landmarks or something that you can individually identify uh, so that you know this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. Uh, with the Sharp IR sensor, you could just simply modulate your beacon uh, using a known pattern. And then by uh, if that pattern is fast enough, then you could, uh, you could tell where exactly you're seeing it still and which one. So, okay, let's go over into my CAD program. Okay, here we go. I have an illustration of the angles that a robot might see uh, the various beacons in. And I'm showing the locations of the beacons here. So they are shown as the dots and these beacons are known uh, for which beacon they are and exactly where they are. Uh, the only unknown is where the robot is and which way it's headed. So let's go through some geometric principles and uh, build from there. In geometry, we learned that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle always equals 180 degrees and that two angles when added together have a uh, angle of 180 degrees uh, that forms a straight line. So here I am creating an exterior angle of this triangle with, and that is angle D. If I set those two together and cancel out C we end up with the exterior angle theorem which states that the sum of the opposite interior angles is equal to the an exterior angle of a triangle. Now we'll look at the inscribed angle theorem and this says that given um, a fixed angle uh, looking at two fixed points, uh, I'm, I'm stating this Badly, but uh, the, with a fixed angle going through fixed points, the vertex here will pass along a circular path. Um, and to be technically correct, it's not really circle, circular, it's two circles. 
uh, but I am not using the second circle here, so I am just going to ignore it. Um, and I'm going to call these points A, B, this is my observer, and this is theta 1. Now I'm just going to get rid of the circle uh, and actually the labels as well and turn this into a triangle by putting a line over here. Uh, I'm also going to keep the center of the circle. So here we are. And now I'm going to draw a line from the observer through the center of the circle to the opposite side and also from the center of the circle to this vertex here. Note that this triangle right here is actually isosceles because these two right here are equal to each other because their radius is a circle. That makes these two angles here equal to each other. Now, uh, using the exterior angle theorem, we come up with the fact that B is equal to 2A because B is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. And this angle here is the same angle as angle A. So B equals 2A. And I'm going to do that with the other side of the triangle here. D equals 2C. And then we'll note that if we add uh, B and D together, it'll equal 2 times A and C. And remember that A and C together are equal to theta 1. So what we end up with here is this angle here. Uh, that is from the center point to the fixed locations is two times the angle theta one. All right, so let's start working towards finding the center of the circle now. Here I have a point that is exactly halfway between B and A, and that is super easy to calculate by just finding the difference in their position and dividing the uh, delta X and delta Y by two. And I can find the slope of this AB segment. And I can find the slope of this because it's perpendicular. Uh, note that this is, this is always perpendicular. Uh, so the, the perpendicular slope is negative 1 over the slope AB. Now using trigonometry, uh, actually one more little step that you have to realize. Because this angle here was twice this angle here, if I cut it in half, now this is equal to theta 1. I can use trigonometry now to find the center of the circle. Uh, remember that in uh, trigonometry they said that tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So in this case tangent of theta 1 is equal to the opposite, which is 1 half AB over E. Or if I skip a step here, uh, 1 half, I'm just taking the 2 and putting it down here already. Uh, it's like that. And if I rearrange to solve for length E, it looks like this. E equals AB divided by 2 times tangent of theta 1. And by finding the coordinates of the halfway point between A and B, I can traverse along E and find the center point. Now I can do that for the second triangle using uh, the second and third landmarks. Uh, did I say triangle? I meant circle. Um, and we'll virtually build this line here between the circle centers and note that they are always 90 degrees. And um, it's pretty easy now to find the location of the robot. So we directly know what the slope of this is by just taking the difference between the two of them, uh, two circle centers. And we know the slope of this line is perpendicular to the circle center line. And so we can just find the perpendicular slope, uh, negative one over the slope. Now we can find the intersection point. If we use uh, point slope uh, form for a line, we can find the intersections of these two lines and arrive at the intersection point. And this intersection point is exactly halfway 
from the second landmark to the observer. So if I simply double the delta x delta y, I can arrive at the observer's location or the location of your robot. Um, and then to figure out the heading of the robot, all you have to do is you take the um, angle from, um, I'll just go, I'm taking you to another slide that's a little bit misleading because I actually implemented this a different way, but uh, uh, do as I say, not as I uh, say. Um, <laughs> so uh, the actual angle from the robot to a landmark, subtract from that the measured angle uh, based on the robot's uh, coordinates. So the angle from the robot to the landmark is in world coordinates, and the angle uh, to the landmark in robot coordinates is what's subtracted away. Um, I'm saying measured from the video because that's actually how I implemented this uh, was using video, but uh, it would work just as well using a rotating culminator. And then finally, finally, just to make it play nicely with your code, uh, enforce a limit of 0 to 2 pi. Uh, if you end up with an angle that's negative or more than 2 pi, uh, just adjust it so that it sits within that range. So that's all you have to do to figure out where your robot is and where it's headed. Um, I will be doing two more videos related to this. One of them will... Uh, talk about blob finding, which is how I identified my landmarks in video. And then uh, the third one will be just showing it all put together uh, and some examples of the results and how I dealt with things that weren't necessarily working out well. So for robotbrigade.com, I'm Jack Buffington.